Hello, my name is Johnny Best, and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, I'm, today I'm going to be showing you how to create and texture, or model and texture a compass, uh, such as the one you are seeing right now. Uh, there's not really much to this scene, uh, except texturing. Uh, the, the, the compass is pretty much just a cylinder that's been shaped and stuff. Also, there's the compass, and then the needle thing right there. And then, of course, texturing, so there's the scratches on the glass cover thing. Uh, obviously, that compass image right there, and then that's optional uh, optional step of uh, getting it to the tile texture. And then a little more stuff, such as the depth of field, and so on. And so let's get started. So this is, this is the sort of scene you could render in an external render. Uh, it'd be a good event scene to do that, but I didn't because I don't have the time. And let's get back to the 3D view. So basically, here is, and just a second, I'll hide that. So here is a scene within Blender, just a compass like that. And the reason why you cannot see the glass cover is because I have uh, transparency enabled. For a purpose, right there. So there's just a needle point, the needle thing, and also I rigged the compass. I'll show you how to do that as well. So whenever you rotate the compass or rotate the empty, the compass also rotates, and you can't really see it very well, but it does. However, that does not spin because of, because the needle is magnetic. All right, so. This is just a scene here, and of course, we also have a lighting, a lamp, and spotlights, and the lamp is also the uh, shadows. Uh, and then the finished result is this one. So, let's get started with the tutorial, and I'll try to make it as fast as possible so that you don't have to sit here for the rest of your life. Let me just say that. So, to start with, we're going to open up a new file in Blender. Alright, and if you're using 2.56 like I am, or 2.5 anything, you should see this. So we're just going to move that a little bit. To start with, I'm going to delete the default cube and turn off the arrows. I don't like them. Delete the default cube and press Shift S and cursor to center. Just like that. So now the cursor is in the center. Then I'm going to add a cylinder. And I'm just going to start making the base base or the, just a trying to create just a starting compass shape like this one. This compass I'm doing is pretty thin like that. And then hmm, should have actually just not even capped the ends, but anyway, I didn't. So just take that center vertex of both and delete them. So now you have this ring. Which is exactly exactly what we want. Now what I want to do is I want to. Uh, Add a sil first of all, oops, I want to shade that smooth, and then I want to add a solidify modifier. So what this does is it actually makes it thicker automatically, but you can't really see it right now. Uh, if you go into wireframe mode, however, you can see how thick it's getting. So I think I'll do like 0.3 or something like that. Oops, 0 0.03. Oops. I'm also going to add the oh, sorry, a subdivision surface. And then I'll, lastly, I'll add an edge split. Maybe I'm supposed to put the edge split above it. <laughs> Sorry, the edge split is supposed to be above the subsurf. So the order of this is solidify, then edge split, then subsurf. And just leave everything, the edge split and the subsurf as default. Now what we want to do is we want to start making the rest of the the compass. So with the if you look at the finished picture, uh, I guess I'll just go to it down here. So if you just go to the finished picture, you can see that the compass, you can't really see it. I hope you can see it. It kind of, in the middle, it will go inwards a little bit. Then it will go all the way down to the base and then make the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll head back into Blender. And I will go into the front view and just add an edge loop right in the center, or just about like that. Then I'm going to 
mm, extrude inwards by pressing E and S. And this will just make, you go back, just make that, this right here. Just find a suitable place. And then we're going to go back into the front view and extrude downwards by pressing E and Z. Just to get almost to the bottom. I'll take care of the mistakes there in a moment. And then I'm just going to extrude inwards by pressing E and S and then press the wrong button. Press W, merge and add center. So now you have this. Now that looks bad. We're going to select everything and press Control N to recalculate with the normals and just to make note. And I think this happened to me before. Just take a look at this. I think I have to calculate the normals of, of that. So just take the ones that are bad and recalculate those normals. So I just took each of those bad places and just press Control N and then it fixes everything. Okay? So if you have that problem, which I think you will, just select the bad places, the faces, and press Control N to recalculate the normal. So now everything looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take each area of the compass, which is namely this outside area, then the inside, and then the compass face itself. So I'm just going to select that vertex and that edge right there, press P, and now it's a separate object, like that. And then I'll take, oops, go into this one, select that edge right there, and that edge right, oh, you have to go, because it's getting confused there, select, I didn't get it all, did I? Oh, I did. So just select that, those faces right there, probably just select them using the, the pressing B and just selecting them all, uh, select that and press P and separate. So now we have three different things like we want. Alright, so now we can, uh, you know, get more into texturing now. Uh, I'll just add, press Shift S and cursor to and just take this bottom edge right there and just press cursor to select it. And then I'll add a plane for this to sit on. And then also I'm going to find an appropriate camera view. I think I had mine around here. Oops. Wait, sure I did the right thing. Yep, see, mess it up. I'm going to just find an appropriate camera angle. That is good. And I guess I'm going to have to move it a little bit upwards. And just fiddle with this. This is a matter of opinion. And I'll scale it up. So that's just about right, I think. And now if we hit F12. So this is what we've got right now. And it doesn't look that good. And the reason why is because we still have some a little work to do. So I think I'm going a little bit slowly here. Let's get on with this. So to start with, we've got the outside. We'll give a very quick material, uh, a little, I mean, reflective. Uh, I'd say, you know, give it a reflectivity of 0.5. So just go to materials, set the, reflect set the reflectivity to 0.5, and I'll make this quite dark. Um, that, maybe. All right, and we're going to call this sh uh, shiny outside. I have no idea. That's just fine. Next thing is this, this area right here. Ooh, ah, uh, darn it. That's a mistake I made here. You have to separate those two. That's part of this. So we're just going to take that and that thing I just separated and press Control J. Sorry about that. And also, one important thing, we're going to move the solidify for that and for this. So only the outside of the compass is solidified at all. That's another reason why we're separating those two, separating the compass into pieces. So let's take this thing we just created right here, or joined, and I don't want that. I'm going to press single user, and I'm going to press, uh, press single, press the two, make it single user, and press, you know, type, make, call it, like, inside, 
dual. Okay, so this is not going to be very reflective at all. In fact, it's not going to be. So just turn off, oops, turn off mirror, and turn specular intensity to 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So it's quite dull, and I'm gonna make it almost black, even more black than it was before. The other one was. So that's just that. Next, we're going to do the fun part, and I'm gonna do this quickly as well. I'm going to texture that, and that is basically going to be a compass texture. Uh, oops, it's not that. It is this texture right here. It's called Compass TE. I got it off Google, but I'll just make it available, I guess. So this is just it. What I'm going to do is I don't like it that this is white and everything else is black. I'm going to invert it inside Blender. So what I'm going to, I'm going to add a new material to this. And I'm going to call this compass, add a new texture, and change the type to image or movie. And I'm just going to select that texture and select it. So this is the texture we have, and I'm also, I'm also going to change the mapping to UV. And then I'll also have to quickly project it, quickly project this thingy here, the compass area. So let's go into edit mode, and with that means everything selected, press project from view. And just align this like so. Just so that it fits inside nicely. And I think that takes care of that. So just join those two. And you can check out the render. So this is the result we have now. And the reason why you cannot see very much in this picture is because the lighting is awful. But we're not going to worry about lighting right now. However, I will temporarily fix the lighting. So I'll just move that to the center. That should be all right for now. All right, so we've basically got that done. And in my final render, I actually made a dome, a dome covering the entire thing, entire scene, so that it could reflect off, almost like a sky background. But it's not necessary, so I won't do that here. Another thing, we have to. Oh, you don't, you don't have to, but if you what I did was I made a glass uh, cover on the compass. I'm sure all compasses have covers on them, and it'd be dumb not to. And if you also noticed, if I go back to the final render, you can see that, that it's got scratches on it. And this is achieved using an image and a bunch of texture stuff. And it's actually an optional step, but it actually, you know, as you can see, it adds, some, adds something to the picture. Just a glass covering would not be as interesting, I think. I hope. So I'll quickly show you how to model, or not model, I'll show you how to texture that. So let's take this, the outside of the, sil of, 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 bleh, of the compass, and just take that top edge right there, like I've done, and extrude inwards. In fact, just more. And then select that edge you just extrude offwards and the in middle vertex, and press P and separate. So now they are separated. And this is going to be our glass covering. And I also want to remove the everything except the subsurf. Now I'm going to just going to move that slightly downwards. And I think I will also scale that down. So this is what we have right now, and it looks bad. So I'm just going to make that single user and call this material glass. And by the way, naming all these textures is, uh, I mean, these materials is optional, obviously. Change the secular intensity to 0.1. Uh, and we're going to turn off mirror just for this. And change the alpha, sorry, change the alpha to 0.1. And the reason why, not, reason why we're not making it 0 is because we're going to be adding a te image texture which will control its own alpha value. So this actually, this 0.1 will not control, it won't control how 
transparent it is. In fact, it will be transparent except this basically will say how transparent uh, the scratches will be. Alright, so that took care of that. And what else? Oh yeah, change type to the type of transparency to ray trace. As the transparency will not at all, not even close, give what we want. Oh yeah, and one more thing, I forgot. So with a mirror, change the gloss amount to 0.9. Okay. Don't forget that. Or you can't forget it if you like. Uh, so now we've got and also I'm gonna Turn on rate, uh, tran turn on transparency in the object, the, the object tab right here, and then just display. So now it's transparent, and we can see through it mostly. So we've got the glass, we've got the compass, we've got the everything pr practically except that scratch is on there, on the compass, and this is probably the main point of the whole tutorial. You do, do, do scr make scratches on here. You do not have to make your own scratches unless you're feeling a little bit adventurous here. I'm simply just going to use a texture. A scratches texture I found off a texture website, CD Textures. Lots of nice textures off that website. And it's called, the texture is in the, it's in the grunge area. Grunge textures, okay? And it's just and it's in the scratches area as well. And this is called scratches. 000311M. So let's take that texture, and it basically has lots of lots and lots of scratches, almost like scratches on a chalkboard. We're going to do a couple things here. First of all, turn off color, and if you go to both, now nothing's there. What you have to do now is you have to change the blend type to multiply. All right, and then now you want to convert it to black and white since you're actually not going to be seeing the texture at all. You're just going to be seeing scratches. And it's basically saying where the scratches should be. So change it to RGB to intensity. Also change it to negative since oh, wait, don't don't check negative and you'll see why in a second. But uh, check alpha. In fact, actually, this is actually this is whole texture basically saying where we don't want the scratches to be, and then the other alpha value will fiddle with the alpha of the scratches. What you have to do is you have to first of all, I'm just changing this alpha value to one right here, and yeah, leave negative off. Then go to colors and change the contrast to something like three, because right now the scratches is kind of overwhelming. Also change the brightness to something like 0.8. So now you can see there's a bunch of scratches on there, and I think I've got to change the alpha value to something lower. But as you can see now, we've got scratches. So I think I got to change it to 0.1 or something like that. Something not very high, and maybe that. Maybe if I leave that degenerated. And mm, you gotta experiment with the alpha value, but if I just this render, first of all, it looks terrible. I've gotta do one thing. Turn off traceable so it doesn't cast a shadow. Alright, so I just stopped it in the middle there. If I just move a little bit closer, you can see there's scratches on the glass. However, I think I've made that alpha a little too much. If I change this alpha to 1, the scratches will be really apparent. I mean, there'll be no alpha value to them at all. And the scratches on here, we don't want that to happen. Because, as you can see, they just get this black stuff. And it looks sort of like weird. So, just change the alpha value to something like, you know, 0.5. Gotta experiment with that value there and changing negative doing checking negative will give you a quite different result as you can see now if you check, if you check negative first of all you can see that it's basically now saying that whatever this texture now it basically inverted everything we don't want that at all so just don't remember don't check negative 
that should be pretty easy to do since the negative value isn't there. So just, you know, depending on how, how big scratches you want or something like that, you can fiddle with the alpha value of this right here. Oh, I'll actually leave that alpha value alone. But basically, you can fiddle with the, the alpha value of the other one and get different results for more heavier scratches, you know. You know, do different kind of scratches. But they, there you go. So that is how you really create scratches uh, within Blender like that on any object, you know, fork or metal or anything like that. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could even create it the just use that use with this technique here and use it to uh, create its scratches on the compass itself. All right, but there is one thing here that is very apparent. If you look at this image in com not completed rendering and look at the finished image, wait a second, something is quite different, and that is one thing. We forgot to invert that texture right there. The compass texture. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn that, delete the subsurf. Alright. And I'm going to go to the textures and go down here and hit negative to invert the color. And if you go to, ugh, you go to the texture itself, or render, you should see should see uh, black where uh, there was white. There we go. So you can see it's inverted the entire texture just the way they want it and now we've got the scratches have a quite different appearance. More like this. Alright, I took care of the scratches. I hope you learned something from the from the, uh, hope you learned something from is something so far from this tutorial. Uh, so now we're just going to make a very basic lighting scheme here. All right? So to leave that default lamp, and then we'll just uh, duplicate that and add that as a spotlight, and change the energy to 0.5, and turn off shadow. And you can scale it down a little bit if you like, and then duplicate that one, that spotlight, and Bring that one over here. So now I got spotlights right there. And that's it, really. <laughs> that's practically the lighting scheme you need. So, hmm, I guess that's really it. If you really wanted to add some character to your image, you could add a tile texture like what I'm doing right now, because that way the, the, that the feel is more apparent. You can see the blur, blur more easily. Alright, there we go. Textured. So you can uh, let this render now. I'm just going to let this render at full size and I'll see when, it done, when it's done. Alright, so there is the finished result. That took a while to render, uh, over six minutes. So that's the scratches are looking very nice indeed. So that is really product done in my finished picture. I think I'll have to just save that. Save this picture, so let's call this Compass 2. And also, one tip here. If you go to the textures, say the texture that we use for the base, and if you go down here, there's this little button right here which says Pack an image as an embedded data into a blend file. If you just press that, it's now embedded into it, and now it's part of the blend file, so you can't lose it. And that's great if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you know, post this on a website, the blend file. So I'll just save that. And I pressed the wrong button. So I'm just going to save this very quickly. So as I said, there was this little. If I could, to the finished one. There's a little ring right here and a little thing sticking out. It does make the compass look pretty interesting and also there's the depth of field. I'm not going to show that in this one. I'll just jump into the uh, finished blender file. So basically what this, this thing is made up of is I took a cylinder and uh, cut some holes in it 
there's a tutorial on Blender Cookie and how to cut holes in a object. I didn't do that quite, but then I used a solidify modifier and subsurf and so on. And then I took a went over here. I took a single uh, face, basically a circle, extrude it inwards and uh, merge this, make this, make this, basically make a circle with a face. And then I use a screw modifier to uh, make a ring. In fact, I'll just show you how to do that right now, very quickly. So just hiding that, I'll add a circle. And I will rotate this by 90 degrees and uh, obviously scale that down quite a bit. Then I'm going to add a screw modifier, and I think I did it on the Y axis. This looks bad, looks bad, so I'm just going to move this wrong way along the what is it? Maybe it's the x-axis. Yeah, yeah, it is. Sorry. Uh, so just taking this in the x-axis and moving it so that it basically the circle with the face. I didn't do that. Shoot inward to make the face. Oops. So now I'm basically moving it slightly off the dot right there, and now I'll create a sort of ring, like the one you're seeing here. And if you just scale it down, basically what it's doing is it's taking the entire ring here, the circle, and taking it and just making a circle of it. And the more steps you do it, the better quality it'll be. And calculating order will mess it up, I think. Makes it look weird. <laughs> I don't know why, it's supposed to be making it look better. Anyhow, and then you can do more things with it. But that is how I did it. Pretty simple. That's how I make the ring. Alright, so. Oops. That is essentially the finished thing. And also, I forgot. Uh, I'm. I'm actually going to rig this entire thing. It's actually very simple. So jump me back into the other one. Hopefully I can do this quickly. Uh, press Shift S on the top in the glass thing and press cursor to select it. Shift S cursor to select it. Then add a empty. And I have to move that, move that upwards a little bit so that I can see it. And then I add a couple constraints here. Also, you could parent it if you wanted to, but for the use of constraints, I will use constraints. Go to constraints area right here and add a copy of rotation, and just change it to empty. And if you rotate this, then that rotates as well. And just do that with everything else quickly, except one thing: the little, the little. Uh, if you go back, I'll, I won't go back yet, but let's just make sure everything has constraint. In fact, I'll just select all this stuff right now. There we go. One last thing. Alright, so now if we just rotate this all, it would all rotate like that. But there's actually one thing left to do. I forgot. Darn it. We're going to have to add the little thingy, which the compass is, you can exactly see what direction it's pointing. So I'll just add a plane, and I have to do this very quickly. Slice it in half, I didn't, add mirror, modifier, take the edge, extrude, scale, and bring it almost all the way to the edge. And that was a little too far. So right there, and just scale it down a little bit. Add a little bit right there, and just scale that up. So that is just uh, pretty, very quickly and ma quickly made thing there. Add, add a subsurf right here, and then I'll just you know, do a little fiddling here. All right, so I just very quickly uh, made the compass needle, adding a solidified to make it thicker, and of course uh, also modeling a little needle in the center. 
So that and I didn't add it straight to there. So that really concludes the tutorial. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, that's what it's for. And uh, if anyone enjoyed the tutorial, uh, leave a comment on what you thought of it. Thank you for watching it. Uh, thanks. Bye.